welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we are going to be talking about all of my least favorite, biggest disappointing, and DNFs from 2023. So on my channel I try to be both honest but also kind. I do not want to spend a ton of time dwelling on books that I didn't like. I don't want to put that negative energy out there, but this is my one video a year where I do talk entirely about books that I didn't like. All of the other videos for the entire year, I focus on recommending books that I love, talking about books that I would highly recommend, that are fantastic books that I loved with my whole heart, but this other than in my wrap-ups where I might mention the books that I'm reading that I might not like, this is the one video a year that I actively talk entirely about books that I don't like. So we are going to get into it. It's going to be a pretty short video because I am pretty good at picking out books that I love, that I know that I'm going to like. So I don't have that many books that I DNF or didn't like. I think of the 300 books that I read in 2023, there were maybe 15 books that were under three, three stars, like books that I actively deeply did not like. So we're gonna get into them and I'm gonna let you know. So the first category that I have that I'm gonna talk about are my DNFs. So these are books that I started, got a decent amount into, and then marked that I would not be finishing them. Usually it's books that if I pick up a book and I start reading it and I read maybe a couple of chapters and I decide it's not for me, that is not a book that I will mark as a DNF. These ones are books that I got decently far into or that I actively disliked, but we're gonna go through them and I'm just gonna let you know the couple of books that I DNF. So out of the entire reading year, I only had three official DNFs. So those books were Haunting Adeline by H.D. Carlton. This book I bought on Audible. I got a decent amount through this book. I got probably 40% into this book and I it was just not at all for me. I did not like this at all. This one is one that is definitely a dark book. I have read a lot of dark romance though. That is not why I didn't like it. My biggest problem with this book is that the heroine gave dumb ass horror girl energy. It is she, the heroine in this book, very much reminded me of the dumb girl in a horror movie who is alone in the house and doesn't turn on the lights and goes down into the creepy basement when she hears something rather than, I don't know, calling the cops or leaving the house or calling somebody. This is, that is what this heroine gave me. She was just made dumb decisions. I was just like, you know that somebody's breaking into your house. You know that somebody is making you feel uncomfortable and yet you refuse to leave. You don't tell anyone. I'm like, why are you doing this? And then I also actively did not care about the side plot in the book featuring the heroine's like grandmother. I, I just didn't care. It was just between my dislike of the heroine and the fact that I just like didn't care about the plot, I just couldn't care about the romance. I didn't really get to a point where I felt like there was a romance. It was just like she was getting turned on by the fact that he was scaring her and breaking into her house. Like it didn't feel romance. I didn't like it. It wasn't for me. If you love this book, more power to you. I'm so happy for you and I'm actually sad for myself that I didn't like this book, but it just was not for me. Another one of my DNFs was one called Order of Scorpions by Ivy Asher. This is a dark why choose romance and this is a stupidly long book. Like really long. I don't even remember how long it is. It's probably over 600 pages. I didn't like this. It was just got a really decently far away into this book. I think again I got to maybe 40-45% and the plot I just did not care. And I was just not a fan of the way that the romance was going. I didn't feel like there was enough going into it. It was 40% into it and I was so bored. And this is another one where I actively didn't like the heroine or any of the heroes for that matter in this one. It was just not 
an enjoyable read for me and I wasn't going to spend another 400 500 pages on a book that I wasn't enjoying that is a waste of my time and not something that I wanted so I completely DNF'd this one then the last book that I DNF'd was actually at, in December I believe and this is the quickest I've ever DNF'd a book and that is Dirty Crazy Bad by Siobhan Davis. This is one that I got I think less than an hour into this audiobook and I was like absolutely not. It was just one that was actively not for me. The way that the writing went, the way that they were talking, no thank you. It was just not at all what I wanted and not at all for me. I just knew that I wasn't going to like it and this one I had already marked as reading on Goodreads which is why I officially DNF'd it and I own the audiobook so even though I didn't get that far into it I did mark it as an official DNF. That's it for my DNFs so now let's go into my least favorite books of the year. So these are all ones that I gave under three stars to 2.5. I don't think I have given a one star this year. I have to really 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 hate a book to give it one star. I think I've given maybe four one stars in my entire reading life. So this is all ones that I gave like two 2.5 stars. So the first one that I have is Dark Fay by Caroline Peckham and Susan Valenti. This is um, a why choose paranormal romance about a girl who goes to this academy trying to find out the truth about how her brother died. She doesn't believe that he OD'd I think is what the story is and so she shows up and she starts a romance with some of the guys and this is a really long series and it's one that I just like am not going to be continuing. I didn't like the way this romance went. I was not a huge fan of the writing style in this one. Um, it was just very high school bully feeling to me and I was just not vibing with it at all. Not one that I enjoyed. Then I have The Pucking Wrong Number by C.R. Jane. This one I read and was n I have read dark romance, I have read stalker romances, and there are some stalker romances that I love that I'm like I don't want to be stalked myself but this book is sexy. This was not one of those. This one I was like this man needs to be institutionalized, he is not sexy, he is scary, I don't want this, and I was feeling actively uncomfortable while reading this book and that is part of the reason why I gave it like whatever I gave it I think two stars and I <laughs> No, it it was just one where I was like cringing while reading it because I was just like this is not sexy. This is so creepy. I don't like this at all. The hero made me actively uncomfortable and so I gave it two stars. Then I have King of Chaos by Eva Ashwood. This one is a little sad because this is a why choose dark romance. I really wanted to like this but it was just not for me. I honestly don't even remember a ton about this book. I just remember it's a dark white choose romance and that I just did not like it. Then I have Elements of Mischief by Tate James and uh, C.M. Stunich, I think is how you pronounce that name. And this one is a paranormal white choose romance where the heroes are all plumbers and then like shifters and this was weird that that's where I, this was weird it was a weird romance and it was too weird for me I just was not vibing with it and I think that you'd probably understand more as the series went on because it is a four book series I believe but this one was just confusing and I was just not enjoying myself and I gave this one 2.5 stars it was just I didn't care enough at the beginning of the series like you need to grab somebody to want to continue the series and so even though I would like to learn the things that were going on that you don't understand because it's book one I don't care enough to continue so not for me. And then the last one that I have is a huge surprise for me because so many people love this book and that is Offsides by Avery Keelan. So many people love this book but this was long. This was incredibly boring. This one, I liked the beginning of this book. I liked maybe the first, what is it, like 30% of this book. It was really intriguing. But then they already got together and I just 
was like, why are they already together? I just knew that it was gonna be some drama that I didn't care about for the like conflict and the later on in the book. I was like, that's not, no thank you. And then they kept talking about like side characters, relationships, and other things going on with the side characters that I just did not give a flying crap about. I was like, I don't care about this side character why don't you make this book shorter and then like write a book for the side characters? I don't care about those side characters in this book. And I, I was just like the first beginning of it, I was like, yeah, I like this. But then also I hated all of her friends. I was like, and I, I get that she ended up hating them too. Like they, she like left them because they dumped her after she broke up with her boyfriend. But like, are people really like that? Like that's so petty and ridiculous and it just felt very like young to me the way that the characters acted and I was like I would never act like that. I would never put up with somebody who acted like that and I don't like that the heroine is and so it just felt very young for me. It felt very boring and I was not at all interested. Okay then we're gonna go into my disappointments. So these are ones that I had high expectations for that I thought I was going to really love and that all ended up being 3 or 3.5 stars. So these are all ones that I like liked enough like they're not ones that I actively like disliked or hated but they're ones that I had huge expectations for thought I was going to love and they were just okay. They were just meh. And that's really what my three star is. It's like, it was fine. That's about how my three star is. Five stars, I loved it. Four stars, I liked it. Three stars, whatever. It was fine. Two stars, I didn't like it. One star, I actively hate this with my whole being. Okay? That's usually how my ratings go. And so for my disappointments, the first one that I have is Hacker in Love by Lauren Rowe. I am a huge Lauren Rowe fan, especially her Morgan Brothers universe. So like the Morgan Brothers, the series that features the 22 Goats characters, uh, Reed Rivers trilogy, the Hate Love duet. I love all of those books. I think they're so fun and fantastic. And Smitten is one of my favorite books of all time. So I was really excited for Hacker in Love and the fact that she was making a, care, uh, a book for Hen and Hannah. You've seen Hen and Hannah for so long in the Morgan Brothers universe. And I was excited for this book and I was like a new Lauren Rowe book. I'm so happy especially because for all of 2022 we didn't get a new Lauren Rowe book because she hurt herself and wasn't able to put a book out. So I was so excited for a new Lauren Rowe book and then I read it and there was nothing really new in this book. I felt like I had already read all of the scenes in this book just in the other books in the series. So the books in this universe all take place around the same time so a lot of them overlap but this is the first one where I was like bored because I had already read the same thing multiple times just in different books from different perspectives and so I just didn't really care about the relationship and I also really wanted to like the characters of Hen and Hannah more, but I don't think that the characters were developed enough to hold their own book. I love Hen and Hannah as side characters in the other books in the Morgan Brothers series, but in this book they were just not strong enough to hold their own as main characters. I ended up giving this book three stars. I was just bored and not loving it and I was really disappointed. The next one that I have is another author who I love with my whole heart and I tend to really love her books and that is Eden Finley and the book is Atlas. This one is book three or four in the Mike Bravo series and I love Eden Finley. I've read all of her books. I've read her books that she writes with Saxon James. I love her. She's one of my favorite authors and I actively give her books four and five stars and this one I was excited for. I loved the Mike Bravo series in the past and so I was really excited for this one and this one was incredibly boring. Incredibly boring and incredibly predictable. Like the Mike Bravo ones are supposed to be a little exciting. They're supposed to be a little bit more like action-y than her like hockey ones but this one I was just like so whatever about it. It was just, it took me so long to read. First of all, I got like 30% into it and then I put it down for like two months and then I picked it up again and then I read a little bit more. And I did that for ages until I finally finished it on audio, but I, I just didn't care about it. And that's why it took me so long to read it. And that's why it took me so long to finish it. And it just 
was whatever. It was not great. It was not the Eden Finley that I love where the characters are so fun and addicting and it was just blah and I was just like really disappointed about it. I really wanted to love it. Then I have probably my biggest disappointment or my biggest surprise and that is Hopeless by Elsie Silver. This book, I love this series. I love this series. I gave Flawless four stars, Heartless five stars, Powerless four stars, and Reckless was one of my top favorite books of 2023. I love it with my whole heart. Five million stars for that book. This book I gave 3.5 stars. It was not my favorite. I was really excited about it, really anticipating it, and then I read it immediately and I was shocked. Shocked, but I did not care about this. I felt like the other books in this series were about the brothers and about Theo. Like you got the characters that you love and that you'd known. This book didn't feel like it was about Bo at all. It focused so much more on the heroine's, whatever her name is, it focused so much more on the heroine's issues than on Bo's. And I was excited to learn more about Bo because all we knew was that he was in the military and that he had gotten injured. So I was really excited to like have like a damaged hero and I felt like his personality, his issue, got so overshadowed by the heroines. It didn't feel like Bo's book, it felt like the heroine's book, and I didn't really care for the heroine that much. I really wanted Bo, and I didn't love the way that the story went with the fake engagement. I thought that was kind of dumb, and I was just a little... I was really disappointed with it. I wanted to love it so, so much, and I just did not at all. Honestly, looking back on it, it's more like three stars than 3.5 stars but I, I didn't love it. It was very bland, which I was so surprised about with Elsie Silver because the rest of her books in that series are so exciting and fun and well-developed, and this one just wasn't. Then my final one that I'm going to talk about that was a big disappointment is Heist by Tate James. It really, really saddens me that there are two Tate James books on this list that I'm sharing with you because Tate James is one of my favorite authors. I love her Madison Kate series. I love her Hades series. And this book is book one in her, I don't even remember what it's called, Volshek Legacy series, I think is what it's called. And it is a MF romance about a hero who's an art thief or like a thief in general and he was mentioned in previous books in the in Madison Kate and he was mentioned in Hades and I think he was mentioned in the Guild series as well and so I was really excited for the series. I thought that like an art thief game was going to be really exciting because what we had learned about it was that there was this game that happened where a bunch of thieves competed to steal something and I thought that was going to be so exciting. And this book did not focus on the game very much. It was the hero trying to get with this heroine because he knew that she had access to the piece that he was trying to steal. And I hated the heroine in this book. I did not like her one little bit. She was so irritating and so unlikable and... I thought I could get through it before my camera battery died and it, I couldn't. It died so I had to change it. So the angle changed. That's on me. My bad. So as I was saying, I didn't like this heroine at all. She was so unlikable. She was just like a bitch and like not a fun bitch. She was just like a mean bitch. And she has like a masculine name and she gets super super pissed at the hero for thinking that she's a dude. And I'm like if you have a masculine or a tra more traditionally masculine name, you've got to be used to it at this point. And your 20s or late 20s or early 30s that you are going to get mistaken for a guy. Like, really? He didn't know you. It was an honest mistake. And it just seemed so bitchy and so rude. And I didn't like her one little bit, not even a little. And that was really hard. So I ended up giving this book three stars. I haven't really decided if I'm going to read book two because it does end on a cliffhanger and I feel like in the second book you're going to get much more into the actual heist part of it which is the part that I think will be more interesting and more exciting and so I don't know if I'm going to read it but if I do it'll have to be because either the audiobook was extremely discounted or I'll read it on Kindle Unlimited but 
I was very disappointed. I really, really wanted to love it and I just actively did not. So that is the last one that I have of all of my least favorites and DNFs. Like I said, I don't DNF. I don't have a ton that I rate below three stars. So it's never going to be like a super ton to talk about, but I will continue to be very honest in my wrap ups. So I will always say if I didn't like a book, but that is going to be it for this video. So let me know down below how you feel about these books. Again, if these are your favorite books, I mean zero offense. They just didn't work for me. Reading is incredibly subjective. Like I said, let me know how you feel about these books if you agree with me, but like this video if you liked it. Subscribe, stick around, and see more content from me, and I hope that you have the absolute best day. Bye!